Um, I don't want to go through this for every drum, but I'm going to show you guys how to uh, compress the return spring. This is for the intermediate clutch. For this, you kind of need to make a little tool. This is made out of a bushing, out of like a Ford Taurus trans or something like that, because you have four protrusions here that are kind of hard to get around. So you're going to lay that on there. Compress the spring. And remove the snap ring, the snap ring plier. Um, on this particular piston, they're a little difficult to get out, but uh, we came up with a little trick here. We got our air apply hole. Some people try and pump air and blow them out, but that doesn't work because you got to kind of center it. So if you can just use it back and forth. You have that piston almost out. And it's an easy matter to get it out the rest of the way. And of course we're going to change these seals. Essentially, essentially every time you're working on the trans, you really have to do a lot of washing and, and uh, all this muck gets in here and that'll, you know, when you get new fluid in there, it's just going to cut loose and uh, clog up the valve body. So, what we like to do is hand wash everything until it's perfectly clean. And then we throw it in this big parts washer, which is kind of a 180 degree dishwasher, which is going to really get everything super clean that you could probably eat off of it when it's done. All right, we're going to get a note on inspecting these Torrington bearings. As close up as we get, this thing looks fine. But a lot of times what you're going to see on the race that it mates to, the metal is starting to pit away, which obviously this whole thing has to get replaced. And when these bearings fail, it really is going to make a giant mess in the trans. So any kind of lack of smooth, this one's very bad, but sometimes it's just a little tiny pit. It's got to get replaced. Okay. Uh, sometimes people are asking how to get these neutral switches off. Um, one of the problems you run into is that this shaft rusts onto the switch. If the switch is still good, what you can do is remove the whole shaft from inside of the transmission. And just leave everything on there so you don't break anything. If you want to take the switch itself off, you need to change it or it looks like it's going to be easy. First thing you have to do is bend these tabs up. Usually four or five of them. And this nut usually isn't too tight. It's a 24 millimeter. Obviously, the retainer sits underneath it. This 12 millimeter. When you put this back on, you want to kind of look for a witness mark where the old thing was positioned exactly, because otherwise it would give you problems like maybe not starting in neutral or, or things like that. And you want to try and gently pry it off. If this gives you any kind of trouble, it's going to break coming off. So what you have to do is take the whole shaft off. Which we're not going to take this one out because I could change this seal and this seal while leaving it in. But a little trick if you do have to take it apart is drill right into where it's staked. And then we can move this collar out of the way. Kill it. <laughs> move the collar out of the way. And we have access to this roll pin, which we could drive through to here. Then this whole shaft will come right out. Right, another quick note is these accumulator pistons have uh, rubber o-rings on them 
and they like to go flat. So you want to prep up these surfaces where they sit a little bit. And they have a couple different ways to do it. This is called a bore buddy made by Superior, which is one way. Or this I believe you get from Mac Tools and what it is is um, red scotch Bright. If you don't have anything like this, of course you could just get in there with some scotch Bright and, and do it by hand. But what you want to do is just like uh, put a little cross hatch in it for the oil to sit in. So the oil sits between the bore and the um, rubber seal and it kind of keeps it lubricated. Something else that's very important, which you would probably know if you had one of these machines, is when you get finished washing it, you got to get the soap out of there and rinse it out real well because that will also screw up the uh, rubber seals in a hurry. Clean this out a little bit and kind of what it should look like when you have it done right. <laughs> 